Power 106, LA's number one for hip hop. I'm Letty right here on the All New Power Mornings. My brother Javen here with me and Hello. the man of the hour coming through. Stepping outside to come through inside, come Bryson on. Tiller. Come Good morning, on. Bryson. What's poppin'? Good morning. Bryson, you have a great morning voice, not gonna lie. I get that a lot. Yeah? yeah. Like, <laughs> people just want to call you just to hear you answer the phone. Yeah, I, I recorded a song this morning, too. That's the best time. That's the best time to use my morning Ooh. voice. <laughs> yes, no, it sounds great, and I love it for us in Los Angeles. Bryson, Thanks. the new record, we listen to it outside, yeah. sampling the Yin Yang Twins. Mm -hmm. it, feel, it's, it feels like a fun record, but it's also you singing melodically on it. Yeah. I didn't know that, that that song could sound so different, but still have that same like upbeatness to it. Is that what you were trying? What, what was the, the goal? I had the same reaction to yeah. it. I, didn't th I thought the same thing. Um, but yeah, I would say it's the goal. I like I like it. It, it really it, like and do you think that that's going to be more of what you're leaning towards when you're because we haven't heard you from you for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, what your your path is on musically? No, nah, I wouldn't. I would I would just say if anything, you know, this is um, you know, I've been telling people, you know, they ask me what to expect from the album. I just say, you know, expect the unexpected. You know what I mean? And right. um, that song was just to to start off things and just to kind of shake things up as yeah. far as what people expect from me. You know what I mean? Had there been like, you know, because we're in that era where it's 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 those samples are coming through a lot. Mm -hmm. You just hear it with like a Sweetie or a Meg Thee Stallion, you know, getting those older records and really making it a today flip on it. Was that one that you always knew? Like if I were to ever flip a re record, it would be the Whisper song. And nah, I can't even take credit <laughs> for it, man. Shout out the vinyls. Oh, so the, it, it was producer like that that brought it to you. Yep. See, now, Letty's talks about it's been a little minute in between, you know, the last time we're hearing you to, you know, this release that you have now. Mm -hmm. Is that deliberate? Is that a reason you mm -hmm. just want to live life a little bit or, you know, just what caused that? Uh, I mean, you know, COVID and stuff like that happened. Yeah. But also, um, you know, I was going through depression for a minute. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, just, you know, just laying low, just mm -hmm. trying to take care of my kids and, you know, just, uh, yeah, get out, get out of that depression. You know, what's wild, Bryson, is that sometimes when you have kids, I have three, oh. you don't. You f you're last, you know, yeah. like you have so much to take care of at home. And then with your partner, the household itself, the business itself. And then these children mm -hmm. come first before anything. You're the last one you check on. You know, did you find that catching up to you? I did. I did. Um, there was moments where I looked in the mirror and I just I just felt like I was almost unfit to be, mm -hmm. you know, a, a good father to my parents because um, I mean, I'm a good father to my yeah. children, right, right, right. <laughs> a good father to my children, just because like, you know, you know, I didn't have confidence and I was like, man, how am I going to, you know, instill confidence in two little girls, you know what I mean? So, um, but I'm good now. Isn't it a trip how they, they can read that? They know what you need almost. Yeah. You know, there's a time too. I, what, what moms, I'm sure you you've heard like that postpartum really hits. You know, and there's moments where you feel confused and you feel like I don't, I guilty for feeling bad, right? Yeah. But then your babies start hugging on you and loving on you and pouring into you. Yeah. It's like they're whether they can speak or not, they know you, like my parent needs me right now. Mm -hmm. Did you find that solace too with your girls? Yeah, absolutely. Man. Yeah. My my daughters are, are my healers for sure. <sighs> Yeah. And I'm sure they helped a lot. And, you know, you talked about the depression that you were going through. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they helped pull you out of it, just realizing that you have something bigger to live for, you know, a purpose to keep going. Did music help at all? Because I know mm -hmm. as an art form, you know, a lot of people use that as a way to express themselves, a way to work through things. Mm -hmm. Was that a vehicle for you to work through your depression or did you have to deal with that first before, you know, getting into a clear space to make music? I think I need to deal with the depression, deal, deal with that first. Music um, actually just made it worse. Really? Um, but, uh... I got to a point to where, you know, I, I, I was just, I was free. I felt free. And um, I got, then I got in the studio and started making music. So Now, was some of that, you know, that pressure and that depression stemming from music? Or was that something that you were dealing with before the fame and all of the success came with the music? Or was it heavily related to, you know, what this industry would do to you once, mm -hmm. you know, become, you know, the artist with the success that you've, you know, been able to find? Yeah, I would say it's, it was definitely heavily related to, to the music industry. Mm -hmm. Um, and just, uh, man, I was just defeated. I was just thinking about, I care, I care what everybody thought yeah. about me. You wow. know, I was trying to please a lot of people and, um, you know, it, it took some time, maybe, maybe five years almost to, to really break away from that. But, uh, really? yeah, when I did, it just felt so, it just felt freeing, like I said earlier. 
and from the outside looking in, I know people with all, like I said, the success that you were able to amass, you know, being that people would see you living your dreams. They would be like, how in the world is it possible <laughs> for you to care what people think about you? Clearly, people love you. You go to concerts, people screaming for you. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions that comes when we, the outside world see a person like you were able to get, you know, you know, live a part of their dreams. Yeah, one of my, my better cut you no, you got, One of my ahead. least favorite things. I saw, I think I saw somebody say something like at one time, like, yo, how you, how you rich and depressed? Uh -huh. And I Talk just think that's him. so stupid because yeah. it's like, you know, money doesn't, you know, they say more money, more problems. Uh. That makes um, it worse for you too, though, because then you start internalizing that. Yeah, I was um, just trying to figure out, um, I don't know, man. It's just that, like you said about um, just how do I, you know, take all these comments seriously or whatever and just how do I, you know, I get so much love from fans or whatnot that, you know, why am I paying attention to what people say, the negative and whatnot? Because you know how it be sometimes. You right. see a hundred negative, I mean, a hundred positive comments, and you no see one, one negative, and no it's just one. like, dang, that you know? You. Um, that stuff used to bother me really badly. And not even just that. Um, you know, when I dropped my first album, <clears throat> Trap Soul, in 2015, um, you know, I was just seeing a lot of negative things about myself and the album itself and the reviews coming in, and it was just really? like, I was like, dang, man, like, I didn't do what I thought I was going to do. And um, it just made me... I don't know, not believe in myself as much. Well, um, I'm glad you got out of that because in 2015, I was a sophomore in college. And let me tell you, your music <laughs> <laughs> brought me some great times. I had a whole bunch of fun at parties in the dorm room. So if nobody Dope. else told you, I appreciate that. Oh, thank you, bro. Saying, that joint's fire, bro. Absolutely. Do you feel like that maybe what you were doing at that time was rather new because you know we have it a lot we have different avenues that people that are melodic can go into right mm -hmm. but bryson there was just something about you that almost was ahead of its time we have artists now that are singers but also lyricists like you think of someone like blast you know and you see it and you hear it but it's like had that come out at that same time you guys would be peers whereas more so you kind of were treading alone mm -hmm. in that lane yeah, I think that's the reason why, um, you know, I was getting those weird reviews just because, like you said, it was just too, I guess, different. You yeah. know what I mean? And um, I'm kind of getting that reaction now to some of the new music I've been making. And I'm ex that's, that just lets me know that I'm in the right place. Yeah, you know? now you kind of take that differently. Yeah, Because, like, along with your life, along with that, that life that happened in between that, growth happened, a maturity of business happened. Yeah. Like, it's it, you're not the same, I guess, just new to the game, Bryson, that you were. Right. And that did come with a lot of falling for people's opinions, but also a naivete, right? Mm -hmm. Now you're you're in a place where you can see through whether it's a bad business deal or whether you see, like, the, the music play not, not play out for you. Mm -hmm. uh, there has to be, like, a um, thankfulness in that, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, talking about this song, Outside, you're dancing in it. Hmm. You're having fun in the music video. Oh, yeah. I, I'm looking forward to that, too, because not going to lie, a lot of the Bryson music is in that in that level of, like, it was, it's an inside, hey, you know? I'm glad you said that. Um, and I'm, I'm tired of making inside music, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? No. Don't, worry, don't get me wrong. Like, I'm going to definitely have a couple of vibes for you to, yeah. you know, the girls can, you know, lady, or anybody to yeah. just chill in the crib. But I want to make stuff. You know, when we were when we were, you know, no pun intended, when we was outside trying to like promote trap song and whatnot, they used to play it in the clubs and I used to just get annoyed a little bit yeah. just because I'm just like, This it's don't not belong. For this. Right? It's not for this. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's ain't the vibe. Maybe if it was like a you know, they got the highlight room, the R and B Wednesday, maybe it would have probably made sense there, but it just never made sense. So like I was like, Man, I wanna make music um for this next album stuff that I'm just like happy to hear mm. when they play it on the you know, and out loud Same. in the club. You know now I mean? when you talk about that outside music <laughs> Are you ready for the response that you got? Like you got a Howard homecoming where everybody's so excited to see you that they bombarding you and rush yeah. you and all of that stuff. And then social media get a Damn. hold of it. You ready for that? Oh, yeah, I went absolutely. to Howard too, so I know how we can get over there. <laughs> oh, it was crazy. Yeah, that, that was nuts. That was a dope experience. You know, it's dope to get to be able to see the, the love in real life, you right. know, because Instagram, that's just, that's fake. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like the fake world. And, um, you know, yeah, I could read comments and look at images all day, but like when it's to see people in person really pulling up, mm -hmm. those girls come up to me like, "Yo, I skipped my uh, Damn. test to oh, come I here." I drove from this and that just to just to see you. Just I don't to even go to you. Howard. Yeah. I'm here for you. I'm here. Wow. <laughs> wow. Now, is that scary at all? Like when all of those? I know a certain part of it is like you love to see like all of the reaction that you get, and people are so excited to see you that they rush you. But is that 
a certain point like terrifying a little bit. Like, man, are they gonna hurt me a little bit in here? Nah, they people my thought. Nah, people thought that I was um scared, but I was more so scared for other people because right. I was seeing like some of my fans get trampled. Uh. You know, I was trying to pull them up. People losing shoes. It was just crazy, and I was just like more so nervous about that than anything. But I had a blast. It was, oh, what? It was That's amazing. Dope. Hey, Bryson, you a good time. let's go to Kentucky real quick because it's really cool to see, of course, the stuff you've been doing. I think even just the prominence is getting with someone like Jack Carlo, too, mm-hmm. and you guys collabing on songs together. Yeah. Can you tell me just, like, what that energy is like or even just the pride to rep Kentucky? Because low-key, not going to lie, I'm from out here. KFC's the only shit we know about That's Kentucky. But it's like, what is that for you being able to be like, no, nah, this is us? Um, it's dope, man. Yeah. I, I love that we have more people coming out of Kentucky now, too, like Jack Harlow and mm-hmm. ESTG, because it's like, the, you know, it's not all eyes on me no more. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, please, that was like yeah. always Help. a lot of pressure because <laughs> it's like, you know what I'm saying? People would just be looking up to me to be like, yo, we need you know, right. all, all different types of stuff like that. But um, no, nah, it's dope. I'm glad that we finally have made, you know, a name for ourselves in the music industry. You know, Kentucky is on the map. You know, all your favorite artists, favorite singers know mm-hmm. who all three of us are. So, yeah. you know. You know, we saw uh, Jack Harlow take Drake to to the Kentucky Derby. I know the Kentucky Derby because my dad's a big gambler, so he loves the horse races mm-hmm. and all of that. How big is it to, like, the local community, like, there? Is, are, you, are you guys really checking for it, or is it just some... We, we uh, not the Derby itself, yeah. but, like, we do... The, just like Derby weekend and stuff, all the stuff that goes on outside Got of Derby. You. For example, I used to um, be at a, a friend's house like that lives like right around the corner for Derby, and they like park all the car, people's cars and stuff, trying to get like better parking or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we used to do that, and there'd be like block parties going on. That's fine. I never actually been to the Derby until um, maybe a couple years ago, and then I was there with Jack and Drake um, for the Churchill Downs video. <laughs> Can it. you speak a little more on what it's like? You know, you know, you talk about the pressure of being on already and putting Kentucky on. What is it like coming up and trying to get yourself on in such a, you know, a smaller market? Um, like you said, like, you mm-hmm. know, there's L.A., there's New York, there's Atlanta that people, of course, know. But yeah, they check for. You yeah. had to fight a little extra harder coming out of a place that people are un- unfamiliar with, let alone being unfamiliar with you. So how do you, how hard is that? Talk to, to be know, honest, I just like felt that. like where I, where I was coming from didn't really matter. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Um especially with the power of the internet, SoundCloud was popping back in, 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 these, in this time where I was coming up. So it's just like, no, nope, you don't have to make anybody listen to a good song. Mm. Like, if a song yeah. is good, it's going to just spread. It'll you know resonate. what I mean? Yeah, it'll resonate. You know what I mean? Like, nobody's just going to hold that song. I, I mean, there are some people that be gatekeeping gay, gay, gay yeah. music like that, but, like, you know, for the most part, they're going to share it with their friends. Next thing you know, they tell another person because that's how my first The word of mouth part of it. Word Nothing of mouth, beats yeah. that. I think it's the best. Bryson, do you get tired of people trying to look like you? <laughs> trying to look like yeah. you? Yeah, like there's a Bryson look. I know you already know no, what it, it is. It's the uh, flannel. Flannel with hat. the And then the hat. The yeah. Because mm. I know your stylist. So shout out to Mario. Really, really good guy. But I'm like, bro, do you guys know whether it was around the time y'all worked together or not? Like everyone wanted to look like Bry- Bryson. Yeah, that was funny. I no, I don't get annoyed by it at all. Okay, because you know? I have my flannel. I'm kidding. I'm kidding because I was <laughs> no, waiting to put it, it up. <laughs> to Letty's question, what about people trying to sound like Bryson? Is so, that a little more difficult? Um, no, nah, I don't. I don't really pay attention to that uh-huh. either. Like if people, you know, I feel like there's a quote out there that says, you know, uh, I don't want to butcher it, but it says something along the lines of like, um, a good artist will copy. A great artist steals. Yeah, great artist steals. <laughs> you heard it before. You I know right. it because I steal. steal. Like I'm kidding. So it's like you want, I want somebody to like take whatever they heard that I did and and make it better. Uh, you know right. what I'm saying? Like do that, please. You know what I'm saying? Like, but make it your own. Don't copy Don't it. Don't copy mm-hmm. me. Don't copy me. But take whatever because I've taken from you know multiple artists. You know just things that I've learned and every artist has done it so yeah, yeah you see it like ball too you see everyone try to emulate jordan and then flip it like kobe mm. did that mm. braun did that and but make it them themselves exactly. uh it's tripping me out and this might be just a person that doesn't sing thing because i can't mm-hmm. but it's tripping me out that your voice is low but you don't sing low yeah what happens? <laughs> I just How? Got, I just, it's just the octaves. Like, I got range, I guess. Uh, you know, oh, I got range. I don't. I got range. <laughs> got one tone. It's mono. Yeah. 
And it's, <laughs> it's okay. And you make it work. Like, yeah. you, you make it work. I, I want to, I'm a fan. I told you that before the interview started, right? So I know on one of your freestyles, the How About Now freestyle you did, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. You talk about how you Drake should put you on a remix, and then you immediately say that'll never happen, right? Yeah. Fast forward a couple years after that, you end up on a feature with Drake, you know what I'm saying? Make a super dope song, mm. you was able to get that relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm curious as to know what was that before period and then you know what was that period that made you go this will never happen and then fast forward how did you feel when it came to fruition was there some tension that needed to be ironed out or was that mm. just you being a fan and saying this will never happen like i would never be able to i was just yeah i don't know i guess at that time when i was making that i'll never forget i was um i think it was around new year's and i my soundcloud was just lit at the uh -huh. time like i had don't on there i had like a couple songs from trap soul just like Circulate and I was like, oh, I, yeah, a couple songs on there. So I was just like, man, I just want to put out freestyles yeah. and whatnot. So I did that, and then you know, I'm just at the time I was still um, I was living at a friend's house, so mm -hmm. like I don't know, I don't know, I didn't know how far this music stuff was gonna go. Wow. You know what I mean? So when I said that'll never happen, you know, deep down I probably knew that someday it would happen because I'm just that nice with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> talk your talk. But Shoot. at that time, you know, I was just kind of like, man, who? You know, What's he didn't actually put me on the remix, though. So right. it didn't so actually right. ever happen. I was <laughs> right to some extent. You know what I mean? Do you, do you and your little girls have, or do you see it in them that they got, they got the chops you got, like they got mm. that that skill set of singing? Oh, uh, my my oldest daughter definitely. Ah. It's crazy. Like she blew me away the other day when she uh, we were singing a song together in the car, and then. Um, yeah, she was just really hitting vocals. I was just like, wow, okay, Harley. Now she wants a studio um, set up for her first, um, I mean, for Man. Christmas. So I'm going to get her one. We recorded a song together before oh, wow. on my Christmas album, and that was fun, but, like, that was, like, her little kid voice. Playful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was playful, but now it's just, like, she really wants to sing, sing. Like, she'd be listening to Jasmine Sullivan, and, like, oh, it's crazy. Oh, man. Do you think being a dad in this game, you're going to be a little bit more protective, especially seeing Absolutely. Yeah. Not absolutely. even just what you go through, but girls too in the yeah. industry. No, absolutely, man. Men are a lot of, I'm going to say 95% of these men in this industry are weird as hell. Yeah. So just like, you know, I got to protect my daughters. And um, yeah, I just can't, I can't allow no no whack shit, whack shit to be going yeah. on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love my daughters. If anything, I just want to protect their mental more than anything. You know what right. I mean? Just let, making sure that they don't get like how I was, you know, trying to please everybody mm -hmm. and, you know letting the world steal their confidence you know what i mean oh man bryson but that example you're setting that's beyond anything like what you're modeling to them and i think maybe you had to go through that because it's for them like you had to go through all that stuff previously to show them like look we're coming out on the other side of it and i'll never let it happen to you Seriously. it's crazy what being a parent will do man. Yeah. <laughs> and how i'll let you treat your kids yeah yeah. When you talk about 95% of the of men in the industry is a male-dominated industry being weird, um, that, was there a certain point that music started to feel like work more so than passion and like something that you love to do and it made it difficult for you to want to be a part of it just because all of the weird stuff that goes on in the industry? Yeah. Um, I guess I, when I was talking about that, I was more so talking about just how like how hard it is for women to, yeah. you know the what I mean? The predatory part of it. Yeah, yeah. The part of it, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, yeah. yeah. But other than that, yeah, there's a lot of weird people in the industry, a lot yeah. of uh, conditional type relationships. Ooh, yes. You know what I mean? Where it's just like they just with you because they, 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 they be cloud well, chasing. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, ah, oh, man, he's hot. And it's a drug. I get it. You know what I mean? People want to be around what's popular, but as soon as you're not, they, you know, they're not even your phone. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So people got to know that how it goes in the, uh, in the industry. And there's really... <laughs> Not too many. Like, when I first got in the industry, I was so pressed about making friends. Uh -huh. Not because, like, I wanted to be popular or anything right. like that, but more so just because, like, I just thought it was good to talk to somebody who was going through yeah, that what I, who it. could relate to me. You know what I mean? Like, I love all the people around me, my manager, my best friend, my assistant, and all these people. But it's like, at the end of the day, they'll never be able yeah. to relate to what it feels like to be an artist and Man. be under a magnifying glass, you know, forever. Who do you think gets it the most when it comes to you? Like up here in the industry, uh, man, shout out to Big Sean. Big Sean's a really, mm -hmm. a really good friend of mine. Super down to earth guy. Um, and shit, I remember when I first like my bad for cousin. No good. When I first uh, started talking to him, any celebrity actually, I would be nervous to talk to every celebrity yep. on right. the phone. Just like, oh, I just just a couple minutes of your time, and then now I'm just like <laughs> Facetime them whenever. What's up, bro? Just, like, yeah, normal. you gonna do this? Super yeah. normal to me now. Like I'm not really phased by anybody's fame at all at this point but uh you know big sean is a really really a really good friend of mine he just he doesn't really walk around with his ego and i feel like not a lot of all. a lot not of people in this industry just live in their ego yep and they won't 
you know, praise 24-7. It's just like. It's a real one. Yeah, it's not. Look, bro, you have an L.A. hat on. I do. Are are we? A, are you an honorary Angelino? Ooh. I feel like we can take it on you being I guess, here. I guess so, man. I be here all the time. Yeah. I made some of my biggest songs here. Um, yeah, I love L.A. I, look, I just say that because we're going to tell you, we're going to hold you. I'll give, what? You're going to be a cousin now. You're going to be a pre- LA. honorary yeah. L.A. I'm Wait, here. what's your what's your taco order? Ooh. My taco order? Yeah, it's the test. That's important. I'm like the worst. Like, Don't say chicken to... tacos. No, it's, uh, I'm like, I'm real picky. Okay. So, like, I don't really get nothing on my taco. Y'all you get your plain taco. Plain taco, just meat and cheese only. Just meat. Ground beef. <laughs> Salt okay. taco. I'm going to tell you right now, she don't like that. She didn't like that answer. Bro, <laughs> angry. That's not no. a real taco. Let Letty tell nah, it. I feel it. Yeah. Feel it. No, taco. I get it, though. I understand it. You go to Taco Bell and you order for the cheese. <laughs> and then nacho fries just came back, too. So. Let's go. Hey, Shout talk about it. No pricing. Fries. Hey, did you see? You know how, like, okay, so... We got we got uh, Justin Timberlake that's done stuff with McDonald's. We've got like Pusha T and what the clips did, like the mm-hmm. like the I'm oh, loving yeah. it. Is there is there a is there a food chain you would want to mm-hmm. do a jingle for? A food chain, I would do a jingle. Cause for. I feel like there's some paper there, Bryson. Uh, tender greens. Tender, tender, tender greens. Tender greens. Okay. They they're not as popular as, as the other one guys you named. But no, uh, I know. I lo- we're, we're talking fast were food. You're talking healthy food, so I I like. Hey, that's kind of fast too, though. And it's dope because you can put them on a mat too. Come yeah, on now. I love tender greens. It's amazing. I wish there was a tender greens everywhere because every time I go to places like, I don't know, Kentucky or Minnesota, yeah, like they don't I just have feel, them there. I feel like they just want me to get fat. And stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, Give you the big portion, the greasiest portion of anything. Wow. Wait, hold on. Let's 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 workshop this. Okay. What would a, what would a tender greens um <laughs> song sound like? Don't let me do it. <laughs> Don't let me do it. <laughs> no, I can't. Nah, Look, uh, see? Stop. Mm. It'd be something amazing. Just know that. Right. He said they got to pay me for that. Yeah. They got to pay me for that. No Don't even give it to him at all. Yeah. They, cause they'll, it yeah. could be like tender. Greens. Greens. No, you get it. No, I was I'm, trying to make a don't joke. It's, I'm, I'm sorry, Bryson. No, it's all good. Bryson, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bryson, thank you for coming through, bro. Absolutely. I know that it takes a lot, especially just going through everything that you've skimmed on. And I'm sure so much more has happened mm-hmm. for you to step out and really be outside and really take the time to have conversations with us. Absolutely. We don't take that for granted at Facts. all, Bryson. Facts. Facts. Oh, Fans first, first and foremost. I appreciate that, man. For real, both of y'all. Yeah, man. And outside is the record. Mm. Yes, Stream, sir. music, video, all that good stuff. All of that outside out right now, um, and the album is on the way. Let's go. Ooh. What kind of on the way? Right, like like, how like on the way? baby on the way? Like nine months on the way? Clear or these like... samples, man. Where the camera? Ooh. Clear the samples, please. If you, if y'all see this? Just, just clear the it. sample. That's it. Just clear it. Come on now. This is Bryson Tiller, Power 106. LA's number one for hip hop. <laughs>